Job chapter 1, verses 13 to 19.
you're hearing what's in here, it's a bunch of little beads. Um, like Orbeez, they actually feel really nice when you stick your hand in it. So, this is going to represent all that God has given us. Everything that God is offering to us. So, what is one of the things that God offers to us? God offers us love. So, there. And so, this vase is actually going to represent us when we first come to Christ. Ooh! <laughs> Sorry, Pastor. <laughs> so, I'm going to put a whole lot of love in there because God gives us a whole bunch of love as we come to Him. And that's kind of the first thing that we feel. We feel God's love when we first come in. And then another thing that God gives us right after love is He gives us a whole lot of mercy. Let me just. And then God gives us peace, peace um, from whatever we may have done. So God gives us a whole lot of peace as well. Forgiveness 
is, is really taking over <coughs> at this point. Oh, but then uh, our boss tells us that we're not exactly up to par. We're, we're not exactly doing what we need to do, so he demotes us. And every time we see him, and every time we, we see somebody that where we were at, we can't help but feel some kind of hatred towards him. And we can't help but feel like we deserve that. Oh, but then you're feeling like you're unworthy and you're feeling like you should have had it. So you can't forgive yourself because you feel like you're the one that messed up. And you can't forgive your boss because he demoted you in the first place. So more unforgiveness. More unforgiveness flows in in us. Oh, and then somebody comes and just absolutely kills us. Jonah chapter 
chapter 1. Verses 1 through 3. Now the word of Yahweh came to Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, the great city, and call out against it, for their evil has come up before me. Yet Jonah arose to flee to Tarshish from the presence of Yahweh. So he went down to Joppa, found a ship which was going to Tarshish, and paid its fare, and went down into it to go with them, to Tarshish from the presence of Yahweh. So Jonah didn't even want to go to Nineveh. He, he didn't want to give the word that God had spoken to him for his enemies. Because they were, they were his people's enemies. I mean, they were his city's enemies. And for that reason, he held a grudge so big, he absolutely did not want to do anything that had to do with him. He absolutely did not want to, to, to give this word to them. He didn't want to obey God because of this unforgiveness, this grudge that he was holding against. And again, if you could, uh, you could stay in chapter 1 and go to verse 17. It reads, And Yahweh appointed a great fish to swallow Jonah, and Jonah was in the stomach of the fish three days and three nights. So, I mean, okay, God's like, okay, you can run away. You can run away from what I'm telling you to do. You can run away from... From whatever I'm asking you to do, well, I mean, you're, you're, what, you're trying to run away from God. I mean, this guy was trying to run away from God. You can't run away from God. And then he gets swallowed up by a big fish. How many of us are swallowed up by a big fish right now? Because we can't seem to let that go. When Jonah didn't want to move on from this grudge, a fish ate him. The fish was used to draw Jonah back into forgiving Nineveh. And if you could turn to Jonah chapter 3, verses 1 through 10. This is what happened. 
happened after Jonah did what God told him to do. But this was a great evil to Jonah, and he became very angry. And he prayed to Yahweh and said, Ah, Yahweh, was this not was this was not this my word to myself while I was still in my own land? Therefore I went ahead to flee to Tarshish, for I knew that you are a gracious and compassionate God, slow to anger and abundant in loving kindness, and one who relents concerning evil. So now, O oh Yahweh, please take my life from me. For death is better than life. And Yahweh said, Do you have good reason to be angry? Then Jonah went out from the city and sat east of the city. And there he made a booth for himself and sat under it in the shade until he could see what would happen in the city. So Yahweh appointed a plant and it came up over Jonah to be a shade over his head to deliver him from his miserable evil. And Jonah was extremely glad about the plant. But God appointed a worm at the breaking of dawn the next day, and it struck the plant, and it dried up. Then it happened that as the sun rose up, God appointed a scorching east wind, and the sun struck, struck down on Jonah's head so that he became faint, and asked with all his soul to die, and said, Death is better to me than life. Then God said to Jonah, Do you have good reason to be angry about the plant? And he said, I have good reason to be angry even to death. Then Yahweh said, you had pity on the plant for which you did not work and which you did not cause to grow, which came to be overnight and perished overnight. So should I have pity on Nineveh, the great city in which there are more than 120,000 persons who do not know the difference between their right and left hand, as well as many animals? So Jonah was mad that he still did what God told him to do. And, and God decided, okay, you're mad. And Jonah, when he left the city and, and he sat down under, under a shade and, that God had given him. And, and overnight, a worm came and ate it. And then God put raging sun on, a, on Jonah. And Jonah was like, really, God? Really? I, I did this and, and you gave me shade and then you took it away from me? I mean, what about me, God? What about me? And God's like, you're, you're mad about a tree being destroyed. That was for you. I mean, it was giving you shade. But what about me? God was telling Jonah, imagine how I feel for my people. That I have taken care of them. That I have provided for them. And you were willing to just throw it all away because of this grudge that you were holding. Because of this unforgiveness that you were holding. You were willing to just let it all go. Because you didn't want to do it. Because you couldn't forgive them. But Jonah had to let it go. Jonah had to move on. Jonah needed this. Needed to forgive Nineveh to move on. To move on um, from what he was holding. Forgiving your enemies is extremely difficult to do. Because you want to hate them, and you want to wish the worst for them, because that's what they do for you. But it's important to forgive them, because even though they're your enemies, they still deserve to be forgiven. They still deserve to be forgiven and receive what you have received from God, so that you both can move forward. We see in the book of Job, in Job chapter 2, I believe, Yes, chapter 2, verses 9 through 10. We see that his wife was questioning his integrity. He was saying, well, what did you do? You had to have done something. This, this woman that knew, that knew Job so well that she was his wife, that knew Job so well was questioning his integrity. And saying, well, what did you do? Why did God so mad at you? And I mean, God has to be extremely mad at you. You must have done something extremely wrong, extremely terrible for God to be doing all this to you. And he, she was kind of saying that, that, again, that Joe must have done something to deserve all these different things that have happened to him. And she even tells him that he should just curse God and die. She was telling him, well, you, did, you must have done something. So get over it, build a bridge, and get over it, and tell God that he's nothing, and tell God that, I mean, that you're worth it or whatever. She was telling Jonah, I mean, Job, 
to just curse God, let God go, and then die. And be okay with that. Yet Job still understood, believed, and had faith that all his suffering had to be a part of God's plan. So instead of listening to her, he forgave her for her assumptions and moved forward believing there was a bigger picture. If you can turn to Luke chapter 23, verse 34.
mean, I guess I, I forgive uh, the pastor for not being there. What could it be, God? Well, what other grudge am I holding against? I mean, it, it can't be against my enemies. You, you already taught me to forgive my enemies when they don't apologize, or even when they do apologize. You already taught me to forgive my closest friends and family. You, you already taught me to, to forgive the people that I believe should have been there and weren't. You already taught me to believe the people that, that talk behind my back. What else could it be, God? Who else am I not forgiving? Job didn't understand why he was going through what he was going through. And he began questioning God. He, was, he began questioning why God was even doing it in the first place. Job, Job was saying that his life seems to not have a purpose anymore. In all the pain and suffering. He began to question God and doubt himself. But God has a quick way of answering us to remind us of our value and place. Job had not to own had not to only ask for forgiveness from God, but forgive himself for dying. Some of us maybe maybe we don't even realize it that we haven't forgiven ourselves for what may have happened. Maybe some of us feel like, well, I mean, it wasn't their fault, but it was also kind of my fault. And I should have been more careful. And I should have thought about this more. And so now every time that someone tries to come and get to know you, God brings you a, a spiritual sister and you're like, <laughs> I'm too damaged. Uh, I mean, my, my, I mean, the, I had a different spiritual sister. My, my sister made, like, my sister damaged me. I mean, you, you have to stay over there. Because I can't seem to move on. I can't seem to forgive them. Or maybe I have. But it's me that I can't forgive myself. Because I feel like I let them down. Or because I feel like I let myself down. And I should have been more careful. And God, why were you even there in the first place? Why are you bringing her now after I'm all damaged and cut up? Why are you bringing her now after... I don't even want them anymore. Why are you bringing them now, God? Look at me. Look at me, God. I, I'm full of you. I'm full of your, your presence. I'm full of your goodness. And you're still overflowing me. You're still filling me up, God. You're still doing it, God. You're still moving. But I won't forgive myself for what I let them do. I won't forgive myself for thinking that I should have been the one to catch it. I won't forgive myself for thinking that I should have been the one to do it and not God. Paul was an ex-persecutor of the church. Paul quite literally killed all the Christians, everybody that be actually believed in Jesus. And, and when God came and caught his attention, Paul, Paul, God told God that, God told God, <laughs> God told Paul that he was going to be used as an instrument. So Paul, in that moment, had to forgive himself for what he did, for persecuting the Christians, for all of the deaths that he had on his hands. This was not the only way that he could begin the life of redemption. If he didn't, he could never be the man that he was. Most of us, maybe some of us don't even know Paul, but Paul was actually a very great man in writing letters. He, he actually trained another young man to be a pastor. He actually um, was also mentored by a rabbi. And, but what if Paul hadn't done that? What if Paul hadn't forgiven himself? I mean... You think we'd still have all those letters to learn from? All those teachings that Paul had given us? When we don't forgive ourselves, we're the ones holding ourselves back. When we don't forgive ourselves, it's not even God. It's you. 
And that's what the enemy wants. The enemy wants us to not forgive ourselves. The enemy wants us to believe that it wasn't our fault. But when we forgive ourselves and we tell God, God, for one, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I doubted you in the first place. And God, I just want to say that I'm sorry for not believing that you could do what you could do in me. Believe me, church, I, I was a pretty rough kid. And it may not seem like a lot. It may not seem like much. But one of the last things that I absolutely had to do was forgive myself. And maybe maybe some of us is like, well, that's kind of prideful. But it's not. Because we're, we're thinking about everybody else. Like, okay, I have to forgive them. I have to forgive them. I have to forgive him. And we forget about ourselves. Because even though we're damaged, even though we're cut up, God still pours out of our own forgiveness. Until there's no more left. God reminds us that he loves us. That he can use us. That we can move on. That there is something past unforgiveness. That there is something past yourself. And if you could actually hit the lights for me, please. You could turn off the lights. We begin to glow. Because in the midst of our unforgiveness, in the midst of the darkness that we're feeling, God still shines through us. God still glows through us. But again, the first thing that we have to do is forgive. And if you want more, there's still more. There's still more to go around. If you're feeling like God could have done more, well, he's doing more. There's still more left. If you still have a little bit of unforgiveness, there's still more left. But you have to let God do it. You have to forgive your enemies. You have to forgive yourself. And you have to forgive your family. <clears throat> it's important that we forgive ourselves for what God has given us already. We must not walk around with it because the worst thing that we can do to ourselves is not forgive ourselves. Even though Job didn't know what God was going to do, and in fact was so frustrated, he said terrible things and thought terrible things. He still pushed through. And at the end of the book, at the end of the book of Job, it says that after everything he went through, he went on to live to be 140 years old. If you could please rise to your feet. Live with this 
unforgiveness. God will not be able to use you the way he intends to use you. God will not be able to do what he needs to do, not only in your life, but in somebody else's life. The Bible says to forgive one another because it's the best thing that we can do for ourselves. It's the best thing that we can do to move on. Go into this next new year with unforgiveness. Unforgiveness helps no one. But actually, forgiveness actually helps everyone. Forgiveness is what allows God to be able to say, okay, they're not holding no grudges. They're, they're not, not forgiving anybody. They're ready. They're ready to be used. They're ready to move forward. Forgiveness helps you and that person. My dad always likes to say, well, the bigger person is going to be the one to forgive. Because it's true. And almost all the time, I have seen God always use. Even though they don't forgive you. 